Welcome, Roller Derby fans. We are here at the championship bout of the Mad Rollin' Dolls Season 14 here at the Alliant Energy Center Exposition Halls. I am Rich Mahogany. And I'm Assassinate. Thank you all for joining us so much. We are just moments away from getting into this final match between the Bad Squad and the Unholy Rollers. So this is it. This is it. This is for all of the marbles and a mannequin leg. And a mannequin leg. I think they. I think they're they're more excited about the mannequin leg. That that's but, true. And, well, and bragging rights. Yes. But so so for those of you who aren't familiar, the mannequin leg is leggy, the leg of champions. It's our it's Mad Roland Dahl's homemade trophy. It's been making its way through all of the teams uh, throughout all of these fourteen seasons. So the uh, the bad squad, previously known as the quad squad. But they, uh, they ran into an evil fortune-telling machine in the woods, and it turned them evil. They're, they're evil now. They are. And, and they spent the season losing. They did. Until the last bout. That's right. They lost their first three games, and then last match in the semifinals going up against the Reservoir Dolls, they pulled out the win, and here they are, ready to defend Leggy against the Unholy Rollers. That's right. And the Unholy Rollers are coming in with two wins, two losses record. So this is anyone's game. It's, it's going to be a fantastic match. I cannot wait to get into this. We are just moments away. We're going to be doing rollouts here shortly and introduce these two teams for you. And so it sounds like we are just about ready to get things underway. So. All right. All right, so we will be... Ha oh, yeah, so it is, yep. We are just now starting things off here. As soon as they begin this rollout, we will introduce these teams to you. And here they are. You've got your 2018 Bad Squad. That's right. Number 0i, Murder Face. We have 101, Quilla DeVille. We have 111, Electric Kill Disturbance. Number 120, Poison Dart. Number 141, Spam. Number 18, Crocodopolis. Number 215, Professor Booty. Number 25, Jaws. Number 273, Ice Pick. Number 48, Sharknado Alley. And number 52, The Bedazzler. Number 53, 88, Upset. Number 7, Kill Switch. Number 796, Conan the Mean Librarian. Number 8, Chick Chick Boom. Number 9, The Trickster. Number 906, Anita Donut. Number 918, Sarah Fire. Number 97, The Smiler. And the bench bench coaches for the bad squad are Knuckle Sandwich, Black Metal, Stevie Kicks, Hazer, Little Misbehaving. So that will be your 2018 bad squad looking to defend Leggy. You can see Leggy strapped to the back of Crocodopolis there in the middle of the pack, kind of off to the right-hand side of your screen. So that's what all of this is about, that leg of champions. It all comes down to that leg. So this is going to be the bad squad looking for a three-peat here. As the last two seasons, they have emerged champions. So they're going to try to defend that trophy. If they can, I believe it will be the first three-peat in Mad Roland Dolls history. That's an interesting bit of trivia. Yeah. I could not I, I, Of course, that, that why, as interesting as that may be, I may be lying to you. You could be, but... You know what? I, I hope I'm not. Yeah, me too. I hope you're I'm not. I'm fairly certain, but I am not our league scholar, unfortunately. I'm just an announcer. We're the dumb guys. <laughs> so we are now going to be introducing their opponents for this game, the 2018 Unholy Rollers. So first off, we've got number 1231, the Rhubarbarian. Number 218 is Toast. Number 22, Tango de Muerte. Number 234, The Manipulator. Number 3, One Hit Wanda. Number 314, Gertrude Awakening. Number 38, Off Me Rocker. Number 428, Polly Avarice. Number 617, Ginger Snap. Number 64, Pegasus. Number 703, Kel Fire Warrior. Number 739 is Goldman Smacks. Number 7734, Hellwoods. Number 800, Butta Boom Box. Number 847, Hello Sailor. And number 9, Shenanigans. The Unholy Rollers are supported on the bench by Dive Hard, Splatter Alice, Micro Mauler, Scarlet O'Snaria, and Skulls Beat Crockett. 
That's right, and there they are rolling out. You can see they've got, what's their, what's their, what's their uh, skeleton's name? That is Jack Skellington. All right. Jack apparently going to be jamming this evening, wearing that Jammer Star cover. I believe this is Jack's first time jamming. I believe you're right, Nate. Um, usually, I mean, he'll pivot on occasion, <laughs> accept the star pass, but he'll never start with the star. Right. So, I, like, Jack is likely a very strong jammer, very, uh, very uh, skinny, able He's to kind skinny. of find, find the gaps in the walls. That's right. <laughs> so, one thing worth noting is these two teams have faced off against each other already this season. They faced they? off. They did indeed. Tell, the, tell me what happened. The second bout of the season that happened back on February 3rd. The uh, Unholy Rollers faced off against the Quad Squad, and the Unholy Rollers came out with a 23 point win. That was 170, 173 to 150. The uh, Unholy Rollers ended up taking lead in the fourth jam and just never let go of it. Once they took that lead, they ran with it for the rest of the game. Quad Squad, or I'm sorry, the Bad Squad, definitely putting up one heck of a fight, keeping it that close to that 23-point margin. In fact, the Quad Squad, the Bad Squad, I'm sorry, was down by 53 points at the half, but then closed up that gap in the second half. So we will see what happens here tonight. Uh, it, it's it's going to be a great one, Nate. It, is, it really is, Rich, and I'm, I'm looking forward to this. I, first of all, I love roller derby. This is a championship game. Yeah. This, is, this isn't... Your everyday roller derby. No, no, no. This is this is a special roller derby. Mm. I'm, I'm and I'm happy to be sharing that special moment here with you, Nate. Yep. Yep. <laughs> All right. So we are lining up for this next jam. We are going to see upset wearing the star for the quad squad in green, going up against Ginger Snap for the unholy rollers in red. So uh, for those of you who may not be as familiar with the rules and regulations of roller derby, you see the uh, the skaters here with the stars on their helmets are called the jammers. There is only one uh, able to be on the team on the uh, on, on the track for each team per jam. So they're the and they are the ones that are able to score points. So what's going to happen here is once this first whistle blows, is that releases all of the skaters to begin skating through. The jammers will then try to get through the pack, the pack being the group of skaters from, or the largest group of skaters from each team. Whoever gets through, whichever jammer gets through first is going to be called designated lead jammer. And that gives them one very special power. And that is to call off the jam, to end the play. For both jammers, once they make that initial pass, passing all of the opposing blockers, they then begin scoring points for every opposing skater that they're hit that their hips pass. So we'll see here, one of these two jammers will get through to take lead jam and begin scoring points. The, uh, the strategy here being you want to score your points and then end the play before your opposing skater can get any points. That's right, both, and like you said, both jammers can score points. The benefit of having that lead jammer, like you said, is you have the uh, ability and the power to stop the play. That you do, and we are into the action here. We've got Upset trying to push her way towards the front of the pack. However, Ginger Snap weaves her way through. She's going to take lead jam in this first jam. Upset, though, also out of the pack, going to be putting on the pressure as both these jammers approach the pack. Ginger Snap sees Upset following her and decides to call it off. That's a, a likely a wise choice, and you don't want to gas yourself in, in an intense jammer race in the first jam. In the very first jam, right. You know, I mean, now there's definitely something to be said for, you know, go hard or go home, but conserve your energy. We have an hour of roller derby to play ahead of us. Mm -hmm. We are going to see Spam wearing the star for the bad squad in green. That's number 141. She'll be going up against Shenanigans for the Unholy Rollers in red, number nine. Both of these skaters have been with the Mad Rolling Dolls for several years. Oh, yeah. Veteran skaters. Both very strong, obviously. And both skate together on the Dairyland Dolls charter team as they travel the world, facing off against other roller derby teams. Shenanigans out to take lead jam for the Unholy Rollers. So Spam now also out of the pack, going to start threatening to score points. 
that will force the call off by shenanigans, waiting for confirmation from the referees. That's three points picked up by the Unholies. First points up on the board for this contest. So the jam was called off before Spam could pick up any points. No penalties have yet been assessed. We are ready to get into jam three as upset number 5388 from Bad Squad in green takes on one hit Wanda number three for the Unholy Rollers in red. That's right, and uh, game coverage is brought to you by Hinkley Productions, leading the way in live HD video streaming and professional commercial video production, supporting the Dolls and Derby since 2008. Nice move here by Quilla DeVille, knocking one hit Wanda the inside, forcing her to recycle to the back of the pack. She was almost free. However, oh, looks like Wanda called off on a penalty. Oh, she thought she was called off on a penalty, but that was, in fact, for her teammate. And now she's called back to the penalty box. <laughs> Quite a bit of confusion. All right, so so Wanda is going to be sitting in the penalty box. This will be a power jam for the bad squad and upset. Power jam meaning this team is the only team on the track that has a jammer, the only team that's eligible to score points. Willowville once again getting in there, breaking up the wall, taking out number 234 for the Unholy Rollers, the manipulator. Upset will pick up a penalty of her own. Looks like a high block on the way out. And that sitting down will release one hit Wanda from the penalty boxes. We do not want a jammerless jam. Then we just have a whole bunch of blockers standing out there saying, oh, who am I going to hit? That's right. You can't have that. Yeah, we, we want jammers getting hit out there. One hit Wanda back on the track, getting through. That'll complete her initial pass. I feel like that was more than one hit, Rich. <laughs> yeah, that she's... It, that's one of the tricky things about her name. She psychs you out. She's like, oh, she's just going to hit me once. No, she hits you a lot. So you're out there. You're skating. She hits you. You're like, okay, that's the one hit. Now I'm safe. And that's when she gets you. That's when the second one comes mm -hmm. in. <laughs> Very tricksy, Wanda. Very mm -hmm. tricksy. So we do have upset now out of the penalty box, back on the track. She is through to pick up some points of her own. One hit Wanda picks up a grand slam. One thing worth noting is that if you go to the penalty box as the lead jammer, you lose your lead jammer power. So when uh, when Upset went to the penalty box earlier in this jam, she ensured that this jam would go for the full two minutes. That's right. When there's no lead jammer, no one to call it off, it goes the full two minutes. I'd like to give a quick shout out to one of our sponsors here, WORT. Volunteer-powered, listener-sponsored station WORT relies on listeners for 70% of its budget. Your tax-deductible donation helps the station keep producing great content for the whole community. That's right. Listen on, I think, July 16th, maybe. I will be hosting a show on there. Oh, fantastic. We just... I probably have the wrong date, but listen to the... Just, just award anyway. listen for the opportunity to listen mm -hmm. to Nate. Getting back down to the action on the track. Chick, chick, boom. Where's the star for the bad squad? Gets through to take lead jam. Jamming up against Tango de Muerte for the Unholy Rollers. Tango still stuck behind a full blocking fourth of quad, quad, quad bad squad blockers. A little tongue-tied there. Uh, we have now beaten those blockers. Last blocker to beat was the Bedazzler for Tango de Muerte. She's now eligible to score points. However, chick, chick, boom. will call off the jam. We see four points being called for the bad squad, zero for the Unholy Rollers. We've got a little bit of an inf score information here for our jammers. You see Upset, the top scoring jammer for the bad squad on the right hand side with five points. One hit Wanda, high scoring jammer for the Unholy Rollers and for the game with ten. That's right, and who do we have lining up out there? It looks like we have Ginger Snap for the Unholy Rollers, uh, skating against the Seraphire number 918 for the bad squad. Seraphire thinking she has an open lane on the outside, but ends up finding Goldman Smacks and Hello Sailor to contend with. So she is going to be recycled to the back. That is going to allow Ginja Snap an opportunity to get up to the front of the pack. Now with only two blockers to beat, that's Quilla DeVille and number seven Kill Switch. They will end up getting out past the zone of engagement. They have to let her go. She is through to take the lead jam. Now, Rich, tell us what the, about the zone of engagement. Oh, I would be happy to, Nate. So the zone of engagement is the area around the pack in which you can hit the jammer. And it's 20 feet out in front and behind the pack. So again, as we said before, the pack is the largest group of skaters from both teams. 
So as soon as you are 20 feet out from the pack, you can no longer hit the jammer. Hitting them gets you a penalty. It'll get you a penalty, but you know who, unless you're a jammer. That is a very you, important you, distinction. If you're a jammer, you can hit another jammer if you're both outside of the pack. Yep, and we'll see a lot of that. We may end up seeing that here in this jam. And we are going in to see Spam going up against, uh, that's against shenanigans. shenanigans. There we go. So Shenanigans looking to get on the outside. She does get through, takes lead jam for the Unholy Rollers. Spam now with one blocker to beat. She will get around. We're going to pick up that speed. And she's about a half track's length behind Shenanigans. Shenan Shenanigans is telling her skaters, keep skating, keep skating. I'm going to get, I got to get by. And shenanigans knocked to the outside by Chick Chick Boom. Going to be forced to call off the jam. One point, two points up for the quad, or for the bad squad. And one for the unholies. All right, we're gonna. You're listening to uh, watching the bad rolling dolls, and we're gonna take a little break. All right, and we're back, and we are in the season 14 championship game. That's right. This one is for all the marbles and the leg, mm -hmm. the leg of champions. We have the bad squad taking on the unholy rollers. Score is very close uh, for this early in the game, and low scoring as well. 18 for the unholy rollers, 11 for the bad squad. Things are getting underway here as the Bedazzler jams for the Bad Squad. Getting up, he does get by, but a boombox takes lead jam for the Bad Squad. She is jamming against one hit Wanda for the Unholy Rollers. One, two, three. And see? her number is three. Maybe that's Maybe the that's trick. Maybe that's the trick. It's like one hit Wanda. Like, no, no, it's actually three hit Wanda. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, I love Wanted this game. Wanted to say, like, oh, you chicken, yep. chicken bedazzler. You didn't want to keep jamming. Think I was going to score some points on you? Yeah, you were probably going to score some points on her, Wanda. <laughs> and hit her more than once. All right, we've got uh, Tango de Muerte skating for the Unholy Rollers. Uh, upset skating for the Quad Squad. Bad Squad. Yep. Quad Squad, it, Bad Squad. They, they used to be the Quad Squad, but now they are the Bad Squad. Right. It's... It's hard when you've been ta calling them one thing for a long time, and all of a sudden you have to change your brain. But we do it because we do we it. love this sport. Mm -hmm. It is the best sport. Upset through to take lead jam for the bad squad. We've got Tango de Muerte trying to get by two blockers to beat. She's now only got number nine, the trickster, as 1-1-1 one, 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 Electric Kill Disturbance gets in there to help her out. Oh, <laughs> Trickster gets laid out. Tango de Muerte will get through to complete her initial pass. She is now eligible to score points. She earned that one, though. Most definitely. It was a hard-earned uh, scoring pass. So Upset will be forced to call off that jam. Does get all four points. And, Nate, we've got a lead change. We've got a lead change. We Take a shot. Lead change. Yep, that's Unholy Rollers 18, Quad Squad 20. All right, who do we have lining up here? We've got Spam for the Bad Squad and Ginger Snap for the Unholy Rollers. Lauer Realty Group says, Dolls kick ass. Off the track, Lauer Realty Group is ready to jam for you in all your real estate needs. Lauer Realty Group, located at 2229 Atwood Avenue or online at lauerrealtygroup.com. That's L-A-U-E-R realtygroup.com. Ginja Snap pushing her way at the front of the pack. Just two blockers to beat as she pushes them out of the zone of engagement. That's going to be lead jam for the for Ginger Snap and the Unholy Rollers. Spam will now get through the pack herself. So I know that the shoulder thing that Hell Woods has on is, is a medical thing, but I choose to believe it's an attachment for her bionic shoulder. Mm. And so... I think if we just imagine that for the rest of this bout, that I think we should do that. has those superhuman bionic powers mm -hmm. that need to be kept in check by yeah. the, the shoulder. No, no, that makes sense. Yep. Makes perfect sense. Actually, you know what? Now that I'm recalling, recalling correctly, yep, that's what happened. <laughs> so we've got these scores up here for our jammers. With that jam, we have another lead change, and Holy's taking the lead back 22 to 20. Upset lead scoring jammer for the bad squad. 
And one hit Wanda lead scoring Jammer for the Unholy Rollers. We are back in the action. Shenanigans, number nine, Jammin for the Unholy Rollers in red. Going up against the Seraphire, number 918 for the Bat Squad in green. And we have a lead Jammer decided. That is Shenanigans. In the meantime, Seraphire has been recycled to the back of the pack by Gertrude Awakening, now having to deal with all of those unholy blockers again. Shenanigans taking a natural Grand Slam the hard way, five points. So that is a Grand Slam, it is, of course, when you pass all of the opposing skaters. That's correct. Picking up as many points as you possibly can at a single pass. And in this case, since Crocodopolis is in the box, is in the penalty box, or she was, she just got out, what that means is once, if you, once you pass the hips of the first blocker of the opposing team, you gain a point for all of the skaters they have in the penalty box as well. That's correct. So that jam will be concluded. Big jam for the Unholy Rollers. Biggest jam we've seen so far, 14 points. They extend their lead to 16 points over the bad squad, 36 to 20. I'd like to take a moment here to thank oh. another one of our sponsors, Super Duper. We offer digital offset letterpress and hand silk screen printing, and we specialize in CD and DVD packaging and manufacturing. That is Super Duper. Super Duper. Getting back into the action on the track. One hit Wanda wears the star for the Unholy Rollers up against the Seraphire for the Bad Squad. Seraphire, who went to the penalty box at the end of the last jam. So this is a power start for One Hit Wanda and the Unholy Rollers. Indeed, the Bad Squad is going into this jam sans serif fire. <laughs> oh, glorious. <laughs> one Hit Wanda through on one foot to pick up five points. We'll call off the jam before Sarah Fire can get around to put any points up on the board. And uh, I'd like to make a mental note to myself, 17 minutes. Uh, is where I said this hilarious sans serif fire joke. <laughs> so if you want to go back and rewatch that, you can watch yeah, that. You can just rewind it one minute and you can get that joke again. <laughs> That's a special treat for you. Yeah, you're welcome. Mm -hmm. <laughs> uh, let's talk about Paps Blue Ribbon. Paps Blue Ribbon proudly sponsors the Mad Rolling Dolls. Uh, so PBR yourself ASAP at a nearby concession stand or the fridge if you're watching at home. Uh, what will you have? PBR. I'll have a Paps as well. All right, we uh, we have a an official timeout happening right now. So uh, our officials just making sure that uh, everything is in order. They have all of their information correctly logged, penalties correctly assessed, points correctly awarded, so on. And so Accuracy forth. Accuracy is important. It, it is. is. <laughs> Sister Urge yelling in the background there. I, I hope you all could hear that because that that man is like a glorious foghorn of unholy awesomeness. Yes, we are. The, the the mascots in this sport are are tremendous. Everybody in this sport is tremendous. Oh, absolutely. I, but but I agree. Like the, the mascots and, and and that's one of the one of the extra fun things about coming and check, checking out one of these bouts live is you get to see all of these little extra interactions and goings on that are happening with uh, anybody like other skaters other folks and uh, there are, there are fun little things that happen in the uh, during the half times um, local groups will come in do a presentation mm -hmm. I, I say that it sounds boring the way I say it but yeah. we'll be like but it'll be like a local, you know, Aikido dojo doing a presentation of ass kicking. Yes. <laughs> we are getting back into the action here. Tango de Muerte jams for the Unholy Rollers, number 22 in red. Going up against the Trickster for the Bad Squad, number nine in green. Number nine, number nine. It's a Beatles joke. <laughs> Thanks for explaining that to me. Yep. I, I might have missed it. No problem. <laughs> So the Trickster is in the penalty box for this, picking up a track cut penalty. So a power jam right now for Tango de Muerte. However, Tango has not yet gotten through this quad squad, bad squad wall. So no lead jammer has yet been decided. Let's see, that's ice pick. Um, the chick chick boom and the bedazzler. That's right. So now the bedazzler, the last blocker to beat for Tango. She will be pushed outside of the zone of engagement, forced to let her go. But really nice job doing the penalty kill there for the bad squad. They have 
killed enough time to allow their jammer, the Trickster, to get back on the track. Oh, big hit by Rue Barbarian on the Trickster, forcing her to the inside. So it's going to be recycling her to the back as once again Tango de Muerte finds herself at the front of the pack. She's going to call off the jam. She's definitely a hard fought jam. Lots of energy going into that one for three points for the Unholy Rollers, holding the bad squad down to zero. So Unholy's pushing out their, their lead to 22 points. But we've got 14 minutes and 58 seconds. And we're going to take just a moment here for a break. Thank you for watching the Mad Rollin' Dolls. And we are back here at the championship match for season 14 for the Mad Rollin' Dolls. Bad Squad taking on the Unholy Rollers. Unholies have pick, picked up lead jam the last four jams in a row. Going to see if Ginger Snap can continue the trend as she jams up against Upset for the Bad Squad. And there she goes. That is five lead jams in a row for the Unholy Rollers as Ginger Snap takes the lead. But Upset being held back by Bada Boombox. So Upset will get through, completing her initial pass. And just snap says, I'm going to call it off. Take a moment here to thank another one of our sponsors, Jim's Coins in Hilldale. Jim's Coins in Hilldale. Cash in today. Coins, jewelry, and more. Jim's Coins in Hilldale. Jim's Coins in Hilldale. Jim's Coins in Hilldale. Jim's Coins in Hilldale. Getting back to the action on the track. Spam, where's the star for the bad squad in green? Going up against shenanigans for the unholy rollers in red. And you see that Crocodopolis gave her a big hit, but she stayed up. Well, it was enough to get Spam through as the lead jammer. Shenanigans also through, though, and really putting on the heat, trying to catch up to Spam as Spam begins her scoring pass. Unholy rollers really trying to speed up the front of the pack. Nobody wants to be a point. That's a great way to, to avoid being a point, is try to race the jammer. Generally, your jammers are a little faster than blockers. They tend to be why they're jammers, but it can definitely be a good... They may be... They, even, if, even if they're faster, that doesn't mean you have to make it easy on them. Oh, most definitely. So, two points going for the bad squad, three for the unholies. <laughs> Got a little bit of a, a jammer cuddle happening as, uh, as Chick Chick Boom goes to take on one hit Wanda, gives one hit Wanda one hit, and then tries to take that inside or that outside line, finds the open line on the inside, gets through to take lead jam for the bad squad. One hit Wanda forcing her way by Quilla DeVille. She will complete that initial pass, now eligible to score points. Chick Chick Boom keeping her head on a swivel, very well aware of where one hit Wanda is. Is going to call off the jam before she can threaten to score points. Picking up one point for the bad squad, holding on holy scoreless. So we now have 27 points separating these teams. Things starting to slip into the unholy's favor. However, 27 points is this really is a, not a big margin. It, it's, this is a really low-scoring game, but that doesn't mean it's an uninteresting one. Oh, no, like these teams are playing very strategically mm -hmm. and very aggressively. Once the other jammer gets out, the team that doesn't have their jammer out then quickly reorders themselves to get their jammer out. And that is what's forcing these quick jams. Yeah, this, it's 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 almost clinical in in how they're in how they're doing this, and we're watching a masterclass. As it should be, as we watch this championship match unfold, Seraphire jamming for the bad squad up against Tango de Muerte for the Unholies. We do see Seraphire out to take lead jam. Tango de Muerte now with two bad squad blockers to beat around turn one. That's number nine, the Trickster, and. That was 52, the Bedazzler. So Tango is now through to complete that pass. And Seraphire gets through for four points, calls off the jam. So, so Bad Squad definitely just like edging back into this, and there's plenty of time left to play. There's oh, 10 minutes and 45 seconds remaining in this half, and then a whole nother half beyond that. So just that slow, deliberate 
dismantling of your opposition is going to be the way to go right. here. Four points, four points, four points, four points. All right, we've got uh, Ginger Snap lining up for the Unholy Rollers, number 617. Uh, upset for the bad squad, 5388. Eight. A rough spot here for the bad squad as they have two of their blockers in the box, Ice Pick and the Trickster. So only two blockers out there to try to stop Ginger Snap. Despite that upset, out first to take lead jam. Ginger Snap also out looking to put on the pressure as the bad squad will lose Crocodopolis to the penalty box right as the trickster is released. That is a jam, a four point jam for the Unholies, one point jam for the bad squad. Score now Unholies 54, bad squad 28, nine minutes and 40 seconds remain to play. Now what's interesting here is you'll see that the blockers with, have have a, a very large amount of space that they can use. Sorry, I got distracted. <laughs> That's all right. You got shenanigans through to take lead jam, and that is very distracting as she explodes through the pack. That spam jamming against her for the bad squad. Spam almost breaking almost through, but forced through. through on the outside. It looks like actually the, the blocker she, that knocked her out went out of bounds as well, so she was able to stay in. She's going to force the call off. Four points for the Unholies, zero for the bad squad. And some form of clock stoppage has happened. It's a team timeout that has been called for by the bad squad, and that'll give us a moment to uh, head off for a commercial here. So thank you for watching and joining us here at the Mad Roland Dolls Championship match of season 14. And we are back here for the championship bout of season 14 Mad Roland Dolls here at the, at the Alliant Energy Center Expo Halls. Expo Hall. Thank you for joining us here. We are in the midst of a team timeout as the bad squad takes on the Unholy Rollers. That's right. The Unholy is currently in the lead 58 to 28, so 30 points separating these teams. Still a, still a low scoring game, yep. but an exciting one. And this one is for, we have mentioned, all the... All the legs. And, 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 and one marble. And one marble. <laughs> I believe I, that's I, correct. I, I've lost the majority of yeah. mine, so we've only got the one to spare we just, now. You have the one marble. Have you lost your marbles? Yeah. <laughs> Boo. I'd like to take a moment here to thank one of our sponsors of the Mad Roland Dolls, Chocolate Shop Ice Cream. This is the best ice cream made in Wisconsin, and it tastes so good because it has gobs of rich Wisconsin cream, tons of real ingredients for buttloads of luscious flavors, and that means it's not low fat, not low calorie, or low anything except maybe flavor, and that's why everyone loves it. You want nutrition? You know what, Nate? Maybe you should eat carrots. <laughs> maybe I will. <laughs> Maybe, maybe, maybe you will. Maybe I will. <laughs> I do. Maybe, maybe I want a carrot. Maybe I wanted one. <laughs> so our team timeout uh, has wrapped up. We have now transitioned into an official timeout. So our officials just taking a moment to make sure. Uh, it looks like some conversations happening in the penalty box, making sure penalties are correctly assessed here. Uh, only one skater currently in the box, Crocodopolis for the bad squad. She is standing, indicating that she has 10 seconds or less to serve on her penalty, so she'll be back in the action quite quickly. But looking on down to the line, who we got jammed for this one, Nate? We've got one hit Wanda uh, jamming for the Unholy ro Rollers and for the bad squad, the Bedazzler, number 52. Bedazzler trying to test the outside line, ends up running into bad squad blockers number 22 and one or 218. Tango de Muerte and Toast, respectively. Out first will be the Bedazzler getting through those unholy blockers, but then true to form, one hit Wanda out of the pack as well, right on her heels. Did you, uh, did you notice uh, when one hit Wanda made it through the pack, her teammate gave her a little push from behind, give her some speed? Well, teamwork makes the dream work, That's my friend. Right. Teamwork makes the dream work. I'm sorry, were we supposed to say that at the same time? I think we were supposed to say that at the same time. Oh, I'm sorry. Oh, it's okay. We'll do it next time. We'll, we'll do it next, next time. time. Yeah. All right. Yes. Oh, we're so good at this. Oh. <laughs> like, literally the best. <laughs> <laughs> and then you'll never hear from us again because they're not going to let us do this anymore. <laughs> That's right. It's like, oh, you're so good. You guys can't be we in the building anymore. We can't let you. 
you're banned for life. Gertrude Awakening jamming for the Unholy Rollers. Uh, upset, number 53-88, jamming for the Bad Squad. Did you know, Rich, that the only horse to beat Man of War was a filly named Upset? Um, this might be where she took the name Upset in a former superhero life known as Dark Horse. That's right, thematic. <laughs> So we do have a jammer race on our hands there. The jam will be called. Looks like a single point for each jammer. Or perhaps only a single point for the bad squad. Looks like zero for the unholies. So working on closing that score gap. Bad squad at 31, unholies 58. We have seven minutes remaining to play in this first half. But then there's a whole other half after that. Whole other half. That's why they're called halves. Um, it's halves of a whole. Uh, spam is lining up. Uh, Favorite for the bad squad, uh, number 141, uh, skinny against Ginger Snap, number 617 for the Unholy Rollers, and Ginger Snap takes lead jam. Looks like Spam will break through the pack herself. Once again, looking to threaten to score points, gonna force the call off eventually. Ginger Snap colliding with the back of the bad squad wall, will stay in bounds, but ends up picking up a penalty. Something tells me that may have been a back block. But whatever it is, it sends her to the penalty box for 30 seconds to think about what she's done and gives Spam and the Bad Squad a power jam. So spam coming around turn three as the unholy sort of dig in around turn four. She will juke to the outside, now breaking up that wall. Getting in there is electrical disturbance for the bad squad. Right, to playing, so playing some off offense on there, sorry to interrupt. Playing some offense, and what electrical disturbance's goal was, um, was to kind of disrupt the, the wall of red. And she did that well. They, they did a great job of sticking together, but that does end up getting spammed through. Ginger Snap now back on the track needs to complete her initial pass yet to be able to score points. So Spam not gonna call off that jam quite yet. Electrical disturbance getting up in the business of Ginger Snap. And I'm, I'm sorry I was mistaken, that was a scoring pass for Ginger Snap, so four points four on points. that pass. Spam looking a little winded at the back of the pack here, now having to deal with a Brutal four wall for the Unholy Rollers. That's Rhubar Barian, the Manipulator, Kelfire Warrior, and Hellwoods. Not a wall that you want to find yourself stuck ramming up against that. No <laughs> way. She will force one to peel off two, and the two. jam ends. So a big jam for the Unholies, picking up 18 points to the Bad Squad's 15. So really just a, I'm sorry, 14 for the Bad Squad. That's right. So really just a four point jam for the Unholies. So score is now Unholies 77, Bad Squad 45, four minutes and 30 seconds remain in the first half. Let's talk about the UW School for Workers. Oh, uh, let's do. Yeah, the School for Workers is the oldest continuously operating university-based labor education program in the United States. One of the first operational components of the Wisconsin idea, the School for Workers, its faculty and staff have long brought these three components, teaching, research, and outreach to thousands of workers, unions, and employers throughout Wisconsin, the nation, and the world. Getting back down to the action on the track, we've got number nine, the trickster for the Bat Squad, going up against yep. shenanigans, number also, nine millimeter for the Unholy Rollers in red. Through for lead jam is shenanigans for the Unholies. Oof. That's a, that was my only comment about that. <laughs> Taking a little bit of damage as she goes Ooh. through turn two. Shoulders are cool to hit. Shoulders are cool to hit. <laughs> Got to go for those guns. Mm. So a bit of a score wash there, eight to eight. So we hear, hear, see shenanigans come through on the inside. They're like, hey, what's up? He's like, hi, friend. Bam. Shenanigans absorbing that hit from the Trickster quite expertly. And we are ready to get into this next jam. Psych! It's an official timeout. Good, good trick. Let's have a moment to thank one of our other sponsors here at Mad Roland Dolls, Ian's Pizza. Ian's Pizza is a proud sponsor of the Mad Roland Dolls. Ian's Pizza has two downtown locations. 
100 State Street next to the Capitol and uh, 319 North Francis near the Kohl's Center. Both locations are open late. You can order online at www.eanspizza.com. Downtown delivery is available. They have mac and cheese pizza and it's really good. Mac and cheese, anything is so good. Mm -hmm. And the fact that you put it on pizza is just a dream come true. It really is. I like mac and cheese with Spam. And she, Spam's not out there. I'm just saying I like it with Spam. Yeah, okay, that, that's fair. Yeah. I I, I, uh, I I prefer my meats a little bit more not mysterious. Sure, sure. I mean, I, I just find the, the mystery very intimidating. I get it. I get you. Personally, a big fan of andouille sausage Ooh. In, my, uh, in my mac and cheese. Ooh, that sounds delicious. Yeah, it's, it, 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 well, I mean, it's just a fancy word, so yeah. it makes me feel like I'm eating a fancy Ooh. thing. So if spam were called andouille, I would probably would enjoy eat it. it more. But like spam. So here's the deal with spam: you got to use it as a flavoring, okay? Okay, because it's so salty. You got to use it. This is not a this is not a Hormel commercial, by the way. You got to <laughs> use it as a as a flavoring to flavor your other foods, right? Okay. I, so you make it scrambled eggs, throw in spam, don't add salt. Would, would you like shred the spam or I like fry the spam, fry, okay. chop it up and fry it. I, uh, it's way better fried than nope. than uh, that. That's true of most things. Mm -hmm. We are going to get into this action, which is great whether it's fried or not. One hit Wanda jamming for the unholy rollers in red, going up against the Seraphire for the Bad Squad in green. One hit Wanda up at the front, but Bad Squad doing a great job recycling up. They're not going to be able to do it for long enough. One hit Wanda is your lead jammer. Sarah Fired gets a little too much steam in her head, gets not, just ends up cruising to the outside of turn four, is forced to recycle all the way to the back of the pack. One hit Wanda barreling her <laughs> way through the bad squad blockers. Nice, nice footwork, avoiding that hit by Jaws. Staying in bounds, getting five points for the Unholy Rollers. So with this, the Unholies are slowly starting to pull away from the bad squad in points here. Currently at 95 points to 53. Seraphire now out of the pack. Right on the heels of one hit Wanda, gonna force the call off. So a total of 10 points to zero in favor of the Unholies. Now with only two minutes remaining to play in this first half, we can see here, Spam is the high-scoring jammer for the Bat Squad with 18. Over on the side of the Unholy Rollers, Ginger Snap and Shenanigans tied with 33. So taking a look at penalties, we see jammer penalties are really not looking too bad here. We've got Ginge, Guns, Wanda with one, and uh, just one or two on the other side of things. Back into the action we are. Upset jams for the Bad Squad, through to take lead jam, going up against Gertrude Awakening for the Unholy Rollers. Rue Barbarian doing her best to jank up that Bad Squad wall, and she does so. Bad Squad now forced to recycle to the back to receive Gertrude Awakening. So that jam will be called. We see three points up for the Bad Squad, zero for the Unholies. Good jam for Bad Squad. As we said, we only have about a minute remaining in this half, but there's a whole another 30 minutes of roller derby to be played. Certainly you don't want to be trailing by quite this much going into the half, but again, not an insurmountable lead. And we've seen in the past where the Bad Squad goes into the second half at a not insignificant deficit, but then ends up really finding their stride, finding the ways that, like the, the methods they need to use to dismantle their opponents. So we'll see if that happens here. Yes, indeed. Uh, we have out on the track, we've got Ginger Snap for the Unholy Rollies, and looks like, and the Trickster for the Bad Squad. And I think the, the Trickster, although she is behind, is lead jammer. That, you are correct. We've got our referee, Eddie Lizard, there pointing at her and up into the air, indicating you, yes, you, you have the power of the jammer. So Trickster will utilize those powers to call off the jam. No points scored by either team. And Nate, that'll take us to the half. That's right. We, we've got, we're at 95 for the Unholies, 56 for the Quad Squad. Um, and we're, we'll see what happens in the next half. We've got one heck of a contest on our hands here. So 
Bad squad trailing a bit, but again, not an insurmountable lead. We'll find out what uh, you know, well, what the results of their conversation going into this locker room conversation are, because we're not going to be in the locker room finding out. That we would won't. be cool, but the, the, you know they, they probably want to keep their strategies on the down low. Yeah, yeah. So, so stick around. We will be right back with the second half of our championship game between the Bad Squad and the Unholy Rollers. I'm Rich Mahogany. I'm Assassinate, and thank you for watching Roller Derby. What's your story? How do you tell it? In your smile? Through your actions? You are the author of your script. Unmistakably. Unequivocally. And with every story, there's a journey. A personal path leading to the heart of the matter. Since 2007, Hinkley Productions has been capturing your journey. Your essence. Your shine. Your story. We're listening. Welcome back here to the second half of the championship match for Mad Rollendahl's 14th season. We've got a match between the Bad Squad and the Unholy Rollers underway. Unholy Rollers currently in the lead, 95 to 56. Yes, but it is still anybody's game. And what do you think the what do you think the Quad Squad, uh, the Bad Squad, rather, what their locker room conversation was? Uh, you know the things that we were doing that weren't working. Don't do them. Let's stop doing those. Good call. Let's it's start doing things that are working. <laughs> so, so I mean, like it is. It's, it's hard to say. I know that the uh, the bad squad has been toying with a um, a different kind of strategy. That whenever I've talked to any of their skaters, they are always kind. Of, they play it close to the vest. They're they they all they'll really say is that we're trying something different this year. And uh, I spoke with uh, Ali Gator, also known as Crocodopolis, uh, a little while ago. And she had said that pretty much the first three games of, uh, of this season, the new thing that they were trying just wasn't working. But then it started working in the game that they played recently against the Reservoir Dolls, where they took the win that brought them here to this championship game. That's right. They had for the, uh, the, up until that game, the Res Reservoir Dolls were undefeated for the season. That's correct. So it, it taken a, a hard loss there. But, uh, but they did end up winning their match against the Vaudeville Vixens, so they have taken third place for this season. We will find out who will emerge second and who will emerge first to take home Leggy, the leg of champions, here after the second half completes. We are into the action. Upset, where's the star for the bad squad? Out to take lead jam. He is going up against Ginger Snap for the Unholy Rollers. That's right, and Ginger Snap is still working her way through the quad squad slash bad squad blockers. Uh, the blockers for the bad squad are Ice Pick, the Bedazzler, Kill Switch, and Chick Chick Boom. So upsets through the pack. Going to call off the jam after picking up, I believe, four points. Yep, four points. Hey, look, there's me in the back. Hey, hey, hey. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Hey, look, there's us here. I like, I like how, so, how excited I was that I was caught on the camera yeah, way over there. Yeah, but now now you're here, and, and so Let's we have something this. special for you. This, this, like we've been talking about it, this is Leggy, this the is Leg Leggy, of Champions. The Leg of Champions. And as you can see, uh, the Quad Squad have decorated it uh, in their colors. Yeah. As, as is their right, as many teams do when they take Leggy. So we'll see uh, who gets to take Leggy home after tonight. We are getting back into the action. Spam jamming for the bad squad in green. Going up against shenanigans for the unholies in red. All right, both jammers working their way through the pack. Uh, still held, had held back, but it looks like Spam is on her way, and she's lead jam. There's now two lead jams in a row for these first two jams of the second half for the Bad Squad. Definitely the kind of momentum shift that they are looking for right now. 
Quilla DeVille going one on one with shenanigans. Guns eventually going to juke past her. Spam does get through, calls off the jam. Nice, like graceful slide off to the side there, right up to the bench. That's right. Gets her four points, says well, that, that'll do. We <laughs> uh, see lining up on the jammer line, we have Gertrude Awakening for the Unholy Rollers. We've got uh, the Trickster for the Bad Squad. So taking a look at uh, penalties for both of these teams, there's really not any penalty trouble happening for the Unholy Rollers side of things. Only a single skater has two penalties. That's Bada Boom Box. Everybody else with one or none. Over on the side of the Bad Squad, there are a few with four and three. Crocodopolis with four. Uh, we are back in the action. What do we have going on, mate? We've got Trickster, who just took lead jammer. Uh, for the Bad Squad, uh, Gertrude Awakening is jamming for the Unholy Rollers, but Gertrude Awakening keeps getting cycled back. So she is on her initial pass while Trickster is on her first scoring pass, I believe. The bad Squad, as always, even though they're bad, still very environmentally conscious, constantly recycling out there. That's right. So it's inspiring to see, really. Taking care of our planet crosses the boundaries of good and evil. It really does. It's, there's, that's all, yep, I agree. <laughs> <laughs> so with that jam has come to a conclusion. Four points up for the Bad Squad on Holies with zero. Qu uh, Bad Squad going to go into this next jam in a little bit of a tough spot as they have two of their blockers, the Bedazzler and Crocodopolis, in the box. Uh, unholy Rollers at full strength out there. That's right. We've got uh, Ice Pick and Professor Booty are, as the sole blockers for the Bad Squad, making it easier for uh, Ginger Snap to get by. It was. I'm not saying it was easy. I'm just saying it's numbers. a lot easier to get by two bodies than it is to get by four. There. That's that's just science. That's science. Can't argue with it. So we've got. Ginger Snap out to take lead jam, but is going to be forced to recycle on the outside. Going to call off the jam, picking up three points, holding the un or the bad squad scoreless. So we see a nice move here by Upset, juking around, going backwards to dodge that hit by Bada Boombox, and just goes all the way around, turns one and two, <laughs> going backwards without like barely losing any speed. So the Penalty box is emptying out. Crocodopolis still in the box, but standing, so she will be back in the action momentarily. And there she goes. Both teams now at full strength as Shenanigans jams for the Unholy Rollers up against Chick Chick Boom for the bad score. That's right, and Shenanigans takes an early lead, uh, in, uh, takes the lead jammer status early. Uh, Chick Chick Boom still working on it. Held back by Hello Sailor, and there she is. She's through. Bad Squad not quite getting together around turn four. Will uh, will cause a bit of jukey jamming this happening from Shenanigans. Going to force the call off. Only three points picked up. But with that, the Unholies will break through the century mark. That is 101 to 68 with 24 minutes remaining. And we are going to take just a moment here. Uh, thank you for joining us here at the Mad Roland Dolls. And we're back. Thanks for waiting. We are here at the championship bout between the Bad Squad and the Unholy Rollers, fighting things out here. Score pretty close, not, not as close as maybe the Quad Squad would like it, or maybe, maybe they, they probably don't want the score to be close at all, but they don't want to be behind. Right. Uh, but this is all kind of obvious. The Unholies have a Dalmatian amount of points to the Quad <laughs> Squad, 68. <laughs> Gertrude Awakening <laughs> jamming for the Unholy Rollers, Spam jamming for the Bad Squad. You know, 101 points is the perfect number of points with which to make a coat. Yeah. Once again, you take one it's science. It's science. And of course, nobody knows that better than Quilla Deville, who on, on the bad squad, she's not jamming right I now. I was though. trying to come up with a Quilla Deville thing. I was going to try to come up with something, but mm -hmm. I didn't. I couldn't come mm -hmm. up with it, and she wasn't out oh, there. She's not even out. That's probably why, because yeah. you know she's. Having the visual inspiration. Mm -hmm. Oh, big hit there on Spam. Knocked to the outside. Uh, looks like she will pick up a penalty uh, in the midst of that. That's right. I believe it was a forearm penalty. So 30 seconds in the box for Spam. Power jam for Gertrude Awakening and the Unholy Rollers. 
Gertrude Awakening picking up a track cut penalty, heads to the penalty box, uh, which will, as soon as she sits down, there goes Spam. Yep. So now Gertrude Awakening will only need to serve the, uh, the amount of time that Spam has served. Well, there's some kind of penalty. Like normally that release happens a little faster. <laughs> the, the blockers on the track looking a little bit, a little, a little confused. I was confused. And you know what? Spam was confused. Confusion all around. Mm -hmm. So Goldman smacks heading to the penalty box for the Unholy Rollers. They're picking up a <laughs> low block penalty. A lucky fan almost got uh, nailed by Spam. Not lucky. Well, I guess, yeah, a lucky fan. Oh, yeah. You know, like if, if I got my face caved in by one of Spam's skates, I would consider myself fortunate. That's, oh, for sure. It's like getting a signature, but a little bit more personal. Mm-hmm. Any chump can get a signature, but to get a skate to the face? Yeah, that's something special. Mm -hmm. We've got this instant replay of Spam getting around one hit Wanda with a nice leap by. Very, very clear for landing. Done. Air Spam cleared for liftoff. T trade tables, drink service was not interrupted. You delightful nerd, you. <laughs> <laughs> Getting back into the action. The trickster wears the star for the bad squad in green. Uh, going up against Jin just snapped for the Unholy Rollers in red. Trickster up at the front now with only one blocker to beat in the form of Toast. She will get by to take lead jam for the bad squad. Jin just snap still stuck in the pack. Only a few bad squad blockers to beat. One left. Will she? So here's the thing. They keep, they keep coming. Conan, the mean librarian, really wanted that. He's like, no, return that book. You can't leave with it. Shh, she says. Shh, no points for you. No points. But with that, the Bad Squad picks up four points, holding the unholy scoreless. Score now, Bad Squad 77, unholies 101. Slowly starting to close up that score gap. All right, we've got uh, shen uh, shenanigans. Lining up for the Unholy Rollers. We got upset. Lining up for the Bad Squad. Penalty box is empty, so we've got five on five on the flat track. As the whistle blows, Shenanigans pushing that Bad Squad wall up to the front. Now juking to the inside, trying to break them apart. Yeah, good, good, good riddance comes back to help out her friend. Upset, get through the pack of red. Still working on it, though. So kill switch picking up a penalty. Uh, did not catch with that one, but she will think long and hard about it if 30 seconds is long, which in a jam of roller derby is a long time. That's a it quarter is. of the jam. Now you'll see, you'll notice that shenanigans, shenanigans has taken the star off. Uh, what that means is um, it, it could either mean a star pass is imminent or uh, she's just holding it down. You, you can't score points when you don't have the star on your helmet. Correct. So, of course, removing the star also, it, it, it makes you ineligible to get lead jam. So it's really only wise to do if you've already lost the lead jammer position. So upset just, again, absorbing hit after hit from Hello Sailor, Rue Barbarian, and uh, number 64, Pegasus, but powering her way through, racing to the finish. We are into this next jam. That's right. Uh, for the Unholy Rollers, we have number 314, Gertrude Awakening jamming. Uh, jamming for the Bad Squad, number 52, the Bedazzler. And it looks like both teams are at full strength. Nope, just kidding. <laughs> there goes the Manipulator off That's to the right. penalty box for the Unholy Rollers. And there we have lead jam going to the Bedazzler and the Bad Squad. Gertrude Awakening now does get by, staying on on one skate. She is now eligible to get scoring points. The Dazzler gets by one hit, Wanda absorbing the hit. She is going to call off the jam. And she does so before any points can be put up by the Unholy Rollers. So Quad Squad now starting to edge back into this thing, Nate. That's right. They're they're picking it back up. They've left. The Unholies are still 
at a Dalmatian amount of points. <laughs> 17 points separating these two teams. 18 minutes and 31 seconds as what the clock is Look, I'm frozen waving at the thing. as. Uh, so we have a team timeout being called for, I believe, by the Unholy Rollers. That will give us an opportunity to thank another one of our sponsors, uh, Triple M, 105.5 Triple M, the sound of Madison. And you know what? What? What the heck? Let's, Let's do, do another, another one. one. The Cooper's Tavern, uh, craft beer, rustic food on the square. And I want to add this: it's not in the copy, but they have nice ceiling fans too. Have you uh, been there? Not recently. It's no. a cool ceiling fans in the area. They uh, just I won't spoil it. I love this guy jamming out here, and there is Paco, the the Dairyland Dolls, uh, Mini Musaya. He's a uh, Look at that the son guy. of Hello Sailor and often travels with the Dairyland Dolls, being an unofficial mascot and keeping all of our spirits high. So I'd like to uh, to remind everybody that uh, that we that the Mad Roland Dolls, you know, while this is the championship bout and we will be ending things up shortly, the, Mad Ro the Madison Derby action doesn't stop there. We are hosting a three-day WFTDA recognized tournament this May, 18th to 20th, called Utter Chaos. Check it out online. You can buy tickets. But for now, let's get back in the action. Nate, what's going on? That's right. We've got Ginger Snap jamming for the Unholy Rollers and Spam jamming for the Bad Squad. And they are both, both jammers working their way through, but Ginger Snap takes lead jammer. So spam is through, really putting on the putting on, on the afterburners, trying to close up that gap. Oh, Ginger nice snap. collision there with Crocodopolis coming up in front of Ginger Snap. Gonna force that call off. One point scored by the Unholies. So we're now we're, we're at the sequel, 102 doll majors. Yeah. <laughs> oh boy. <laughs> Okay, let's talk about uh, WORT. Tune in to WORT 89.9 FM Community Radio for great underground music and talk. Go to wartfm.org to listen live or on demand. Getting back down to the action on the track. Tango de Muerte wears the star for the Unholy Rollers, number 22 in red. Going up against Upset for the Bad Squad, number 5388 in green. And Upset is your lead jammer. Tango de Muerte also through the pack, now going to be beginning her scoring pass as Upset works her way through the pack. She will get through for four points, calls off the jam. These are exactly the kinds of jams that the Bad Squad need to start coming back into this game. We've got the score at 102 to 88 in favor of the Unholies with 16 minutes and 45 seconds remaining. And we are going to be right back. Thank you for joining us here at the Mad Roland Dolls. Hello, welcome back. We are watching the Mad Rolling Dolls. We are watching the Bad Squad uh, take on the Unholy Rollers for Leggy, the Leg of Champions. That's this is the this is the this is the, this is in addition to the marbles aforementioned, <laughs> is what we're standing for today. What's, what's going on, on uh, down there on the on the uh, rink there? Well, we've got shenanigans jamming for the Unholy Rollers. Almost makes it through, but is forced to the inside and forced to recycle to the back of the pack. She is jamming up against the Trickster for the Bad Squad. Shenanigans fights her way back to the front of the pack, takes lead jam for the Unholies. So the Trickster does a little bit of a sneaky star stash action. He is through the pack, gonna be looking to score some points. However, the jam is called. Shenanigans picking up three points. So it'll be uh, 105 to 88. Right. Uh, game coverage is brought to you by Hinkley Productions, leading the way in live HD video streaming and professional commercial video production, supporting the Dolls and Derby since 2008. 2008. All right, we've got uh, Gertrude Awakening up against Chick Chick Boom on the jammer, jammer line. Chick Chick Boom trying to dance up the inside line, but ending up meeting up with resistance in the way of Toast. Toast says, no, you can only get on me if you're jelly. <laughs> I'm jelly of toast. Yeah, I'm jelly. That's that's some skill out there. And those space pants are incredible. Yeah. <laughs> the theme tonight is space. Space pants jam. 
They like to have themes for these. They're, the bout themes are one of the many, many fun aspects of these home, le home season games that we have here. Lots of activities that usually follow in with that theme. Lots of folks here dressed up in, uh, in some sort of space theme. So just one more reason why you should really yeah. be coming on down and checking out these bouts in, uh, in Rich, person. why didn't you dress up for this? I don't have pants. Oh, okay. I'm not wearing pants. I know. So Quad Squad with a bit of a surge in this second half, having picked up 32 points so far to the Unholy Rollers, 10. And to see what Ginger Snap can do, having taken lead jam against upset. But we've got a quite the jammer race on our hands here, Nate. Yes. Sorry, Ginger Snap, yes. Uh, Ginger Snap uh, keeping, her, keeping an eye. She keeps looking back to see. Do I have time? Do I have time to make some points? Do I have time to make some points? And wise decision there by the unholy rollers blockers to take up position at the back of the pack. Ginger Snap gets through, and then they end up meeting right up with Upset. So Upset uh, ends up picking up four points uh, on that on that jam. So uh, again, maybe, maybe not so wise, because while they are there to stop her, they are also there to become points. Um, so the unholy rollers with three points on that last jam. Things uh, getting ever closer here with the bad squad at 92, Unholies at 108. We can see here our scores. Upset leads, lead scoring jammer for the bad squad. Uh, lead scoring jammer for the Unholies is going to be Ginger Snap with 40. But getting back down to the action on the track, what do we got going on, Nate? We've got one hit Wando uh, facing a sea of green. And uh, we've got Spam taking lead jam, jammer status. Um, but. One hit Wanda is through the pack as well, and as you can see, uh, she's falling about 20 feet behind. Yeah, thereabouts, those uh, those red hash marks on the track do indicate uh, 10 feet markers. Oh, spam taking a bit of a dive is forced to call off the jam. We will get confirmation. Looks like one point up on the board for the bad squad, holding the unholy scoreless. 15 points, 12 minutes and 30 seconds. This is a doable thing. This is a doable thing. This is this is do or die time. And so both teams have two team timeouts and their official review. So three clock stoppages available each. So here we see a replay of that, of Ham trying to break through that wall. Just like they did a great job of speeding up and acceptably like just kind of letting her hit softly. Or softer than she would have liked, <laughs> I'm sure. Uh, Getting back down into the action, the Trickster wears the star for the bad squad. That's Jeez. right. We've got uh, sh uh, shenanigans uh, skating for the Unholy Rollers. And is Guns through? Nope. Guns is actually in the penalty box. So Guns picked up, I believe, a back block penalty. So this will be a power jam for the Trickster in the bad squad. Bad squad exactly what they need at this time. Shenanigans, such a strong jammer, not somebody that the Unholies want to have off the track. Unholies also losing their pivot. Goldman smacks to the penalty box to a forearm penalty. All right, so let's see what Trickster has up her sleeve. Trickster is through for a grand slam. Five points up for the bad squad. Only now is Shenanigans released from the penalty box back into the action. Forced to the outside. Jam will be called. See, zero points scored by the Unholy Rollers. Five points for the Bad Squad. Ten points separate Ten these points teams. Ten points separates <laughs> these great teams. And we've seen, well, you know, we don't need to keep belaboring the point that this is a, this is a, this is, this could go either way. But yeah, so we've got Gertrude Awakening lining up, it looks like, for the Unholy Rollers. Anita Donut uh, for the Bad Squad. This is Anita's first uh, jam for this game. That's correct. Right. So Anita Gutton, like her, oh, oh, her blockers did such a great job of opening up that outside yeah. line, but then there's the Rubarbarian <laughs> saying, nope, you're going outside. Well, here's an interesting statistic. Anita Donut has taken lead jam 100% of the times <laughs> that she has been jamming. Nice. So that is a really good statistic there for her. And there she is through for a grand slam. Bad squad defense really locking down around Gertrude Awakening. Quilla DeVille slamming, trying to slam her to the inside. 
And she just rolls off that hit. One thing I liked about that was when Quill Quilla DeVille was, was, was hitting her, uh, Gertrude Awakening, they were smiling at each other. That's the sport. That's the sport, man. Oh. Do a quick shout out to another one of our sponsors here. I'd like to shout out to Rockabilly Salon and Spa, located on Park Street, offering all types of beauty services from conservative to more unique looks. If your hair, nails, and skin aren't becoming, you should really be coming to us. Two-point game, Ginger Snap, and Upset lining up on the jammer line. Upset takes lead jammer status early on. Ginger Snap still fighting through, but held back by Gouda Riddens, and and Upset coming in for her first oh scoring pass. No, Ginger Snap gets called on a penalty. This will be another power jam for the bad squad. Oh no for the unholies, but oh yes for the bad squad. Exactly what they need at this stage. And Nate, they have taken the lead. Lead change. Lead change. Nice dodge around Hellwoods by upset. Just keeping this run going. Five more points up on the board for the bad squad. Only now is Ginger Snap almost like she's standing in the box so she's almost ready to get back on the track now released upset forced to the outside by pegasus gonna force to recycle back calls it off from the knee on the ground waiting for score confirmation 13, 13 points. points oh and zero for the unholy rollers Lead Bad change. squad now 11 points in the lead with eight minutes and four seconds remaining to play. It's, you, it is impossible to relax. Whether you're playing this game, announcing it, or watching it, it is impossible to re relax. 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 But it's impossible. You can't do it. Spam points in like, all right, we are going to, I'm going to knock this one out of the park. But we do have a team timeout being called for by the Unholy Rollers. Wise use of that clock stoppage. Uh, you know what? I think that gives us an opportunity to talk a little bit about some of the upcoming events that we've got. That's right. Uh, dolls. Yeah, the, the upcoming Dairyland Dolls fundraisers. Do you love burgers, fries, and shakes? Do you love supporting roller derby? Then join the Mad Rolling Dolls competitive travel team, the Dairyland Dolls for Dine with the Dolls fundraiser at Muya uh, on Wednesday, May 2nd. That's this Wednesday. Uh, the Dairyland Dolls will be at the Fitchburg Muya location, 6309 McKee Road, Fitchburg, Wisconsin, 53719, from 5 to 9 p.m. Meet your favorite skaters, enjoy great food, veggie options and gluten-free options are available, and help out the Dairyland Dolls. Muya will donate a percentage of all sales during this time to help the team cover travel costs. Uh, to learn more about the Dairyland Dolls travel season and or to donate toward the travel fund, uh, there's a GoFundMe thing, um, gofundme.com slash... Just look up Dairyland Dolls Travel Fund. <laughs> it's a rather long slash filled URL. It, it was a long slash filled URL. Oh no, so ha spam going off on a forearm penalty right at the start of the jam. So this will be a power jam for one hit Wanda and the Unholy Rollers. Great opportunity for them to take this game back, Nate. That's right, the the, the bad squad cycling a one hit Wanda, Wanda back. So even though it's a power jam, they're not making it easy for her. Forced to the outside by number 52, the Bedazzler. One hit Wanda going to recycle all the way back into the start of turn three. And this is, these are great, great methods for killing that time because the, the bad squad just wants to hold on as long as they can until they can get their jammer back on the track. That's right. When one hit Wanda does take lead jammer, but the lead jammer status, but. Uh, she she expended a lot of energy to do it. That's uh, right. And the, just now is spam through on her initial pass. She shall now begin threatening to score points. And there she's through. <laughs> yes. I mean, that's what she's saying. That is a four-point pass for the bad squad. Winning the jam at two to four with their jammer in the box. <laughs> So score now on a Holy's 110, Bad Squad 1, 2, 3. Perfect time for a break. Perfect time. Let's take a break. We will be back in just a moment. Thank you for joining us here at the Mad Rollin' Dolls.
And we are back here into the final minutes of the championship bout between the Bad Squad and the Unholy Rollers. We've got a close game here, Nate. We do. We've got a close game. The Quad Squad just pulled a lead change recently, and they are ahead now um, by 13 points. We've got six minutes left in the game of play, so anything could happen. Uh, out on the, uh, what do we have going out on the track? Well, we've got shenanigans jamming for the Unholy Rollers. The Trickster jamming as your lead jammer for the Bad Squad. Shenanigans just now exiting the pack as the Trickster leaps up the inside line. Nigh uncontested. Picks up four points and calls off the jam. This, things are starting to really switch into the, into the Bad Squad's in their favor. It really is. It's, it had to have been the locker room talk. It's got to be the locker room talk. If only we knew what they discussed. What did they discuss? Maybe maybe we can find out after the game. They the Unholy Rollers have only scored 19 points this half. I guess, I think. I believe you're correct. Because at they, 101, it was 10 points. Right. 19 points. <laughs> so we're going to start this next jam. One blocker from each team in the box. Toast and Crocodopolis from the Unholy Rollers and Bad Squad, respectively. Here's a, taking a look at our jammer stats. We can see the top five jammers from each team upset with 42 for the Bad Squad. Ginger Snap right behind her with 40 for the Unholy Rollers. Lots of things are really evening out here. So it looks like we've got another clock stoppage. It's going to be a an official timeout. That's right. Let's uh, let's talk about another one of our sponsors, Ooh. Fast Forward. Uh, thank you to Fast Forward Skate Center, ne Madison's number one roller skating rink. Join them all year round for open roller skating, birthday parties, and private parties. Uh, a full concession stand and arcade is available. And don't forget, Fast Forward Skate Center is the official practice facility of the Mad Rolling Dolls. Getting back down to the action on the track. Upset going up against Ginger Snap. Upset forcing Ginger out to the inside. However, since she went out herself, is going to be able to come right back in. Great hit there by Kill Switch, knocking Ginger back to the inside and actually forcing the recycle. That will allow Upset to get through and take lead jam. So Ginger Snap recycles back in. The jam is called. It looks like three points for the Bad Squad, holding the unholy scoreless. And for the, the, the Bad Squad's really pulling away with this one. 20 points separate these teams with four minutes and 30 seconds remaining to play. That's right. We've got, looks like we've got Chick Chick Boom lining up to jam for the Bad Squad. We've got uh, Gertrude Awakening lining up for the Unholy Rollers. And everyone's enjoying the music provided by the DJ. Yeah, Saturn's 8 Entertainment, big shout out to you guys for providing our musical entertainment here this evening. With retro flair and a modern edge. It's really quite wonderful. Uh, it's a, uh, yet another great reason to come and check out our bouts here in person. Yeah, getting back down to the action on the track. Chick, chick, boom, number eight for the Bad Squad in green. Where's the star? Going up against number 314, Gertrude Awakening for the Unholy Rollers in red. And there's Chick Chick Boom taking the lead jam. Not even Hell Woods' bionic shoulder can hold her back. <laughs> Bad Squad's really locking down around Gertrude Awakening. Quilla Deville forces her to the outside. And I tell you, if no evil thing scares you, she still will. She still will. I'm not going to, I was, I almost sang it. I mean, you. No, I wouldn't stop. Oh, it's such a good song. It is. I mean, like, and there's like so much. If she doesn't scare you, no evil thing will. Uh, yep. All right, we've got one hit Wanda out there. We've got Spam out there. Uh, they're both lining up on the jammer line. Spam taking off as soon as the whistle blows. One hit Wanda taking her a little bit more time as she tries to barrel through the defense of the Bad Squad. Only two blockers to beat. She does get through on the inside. Lead jam goes to one hit Wanda and the unholy roller. That's right. Bada boom box. Hello Sailor and Toast holding back Spam. Spam there getting a little bit of help from her friends. She will get through. Battered but not beaten. She threatens to score points. She will force the call off. One hit Wanda picking up four points on that pass. 
and we go into what could very possibly be the final jam of this game. With two minutes and 15 seconds remaining, we could spend through in either all of that at this point or enough so that we don't have time to line up for the final jam or for another jam. We'll see what's going to happen here. We've got Upset lining up against Ginger Snap, two rock solid jammers picking up, uh, I believe, yeah, they're both the high scoring jammers for their team. Upset's going to get through first to take lead jam for the bad squad. Ginger Snap working her way through, only one blocker to beat in the form of Crocodopolis. She will get through. Upset coming around the track. Is going to end up behind all four blockers for the Unholy Roller. Is going to force the call off. Zero points scored by either team. So, Nate, we've, we got, will, another, we've got another jam. We will get one more jam. So, what is the, like, my, my announcer math is terrible. Uh, 19 points. That's right. 19 <laughs> points separating these teams. One minute remaining to play, and there we have a team timeout called for by the bad squad. So the clock will freeze. Move. I think that's smart, right? I, that is, is that smart. I feel like that is a very wise decision because at this point, all the bad squad needs to do is get lead and hold it Just until hold it. the period clock expires, and then call the jam, and that's it. They've won. And they then they've have won the game. And you know what that means? Three p. Three p. Three p. And of. Uh, Continuing to, to to defend Leggy, the leg of champions. And but at least some marbles. But it is also all it's going to take for the Unholies is to put... So they we see on the side of the track here, Shenanigans will be going out to jam for the Unholy Rollers. Good choice, she Unholy is, Rollers. She is, a, she is she's a solid. She's a solid jammer, and... You've got some stats there. I, I do. I have a, so so the quad squad mounted a seven jam, forty one point comeback to get to this point. So all we need, so all of the unholy rollers need is to get shenanigans out, and then score nineteen points without the quad squad scoring any. Yeah, or tw twenty points because nineteen would be a tie, and then we'd go into a tiebreaker jam, which I don't think we've seen in a, in a Matt Rowland Dolls home season in the past. Four years, but here we are. Shenanigans upset, and upset. Yes, sorry. Go ahead. Oh no, no. Just, so there we go. Shenanigans is through to take lead. Jam. They have control over this jam. Upset with three unholy blockers to beat. She will get through. So now we see what the strategy here will be for the unholy rollers. Shenanigans breaking through, ending up in front of the trickster or behind the trickster rather. Getting a little bit of skate entanglement. She will get through, picking up those four points. However, right on her heels is upset, also picking up four points. Unholy Rollers need to have an answer to upset to be able to stop her, stop her point scoring abilities over the next minute and 15 seconds. We have 19 seconds remaining on the period clock. Upset still being held back. Shenanigans makes it through, gets another five points. Great job there by Hellwoods, driving upset to the outside. Upset will roll off into the in, picks up four points on that pass. We are on the jam clock, only 42 seconds remain to play. So far, Unholy's ahead by 10 points in this jam, 18 to eight. They need to pick up 10 more points in order to cinch this victory in 28 seconds. It is absolutely possible. Most jammers can get around the track in, a, in 10 to 10 seconds. seconds. Yeah. But yeah, I'd now, say 10 seconds. But now the defenses of these teams both starting to lock down along the first straightaway. Time ticking away, and it looks Five. like it may just be out of reach for the Unholy Rollers. That will bring us to the conclusion. I don't want to promise you anything. We still want to wait for the official final score. However, our unofficial final has the bad squad claiming victory with 149 points over the Unholies, 136.
whatever the final ends up being, this game has been incredible. Fantastic game, back and forth, at three or four lead changes. Um, and that, like, for so much of it, the Unholy Rollers commanded it, and there it is, there is our final score. Your season 14 champions for the Mad Rolling Dolls, the Bad Squad. That was, the Unholies just commanded that game for so long, but now in that final, in the final quarter, really, the bad squad just pulled it all together and made it work. They made it work, and both teams played perfectly. It, it was an absolute joy to watch, and mm -hmm. what, you couldn't ask for a better finish. So close, so hard fought by both of these teams. Oh, such a good game. Thank you all so much for joining us here. I hope you have enjoyed this game as much as we have uh, calling, uh, enjoyed watching it as much as we've enjoyed calling it. And now I'm losing words. I don't need to talk. We don't anymore. need to the talk. Game, the game is over. But hey, stick around because we are shortly going to be going on to the award ceremony where the Bad Squad will once again take Leggy into their loving arms. And then we'll follow that up with an interview with some of the skaters from the winning team. So, so I'm gonna have to say goodbye, Leggy. I, I know it's. I feel like we won Leggy tonight. Yeah. Even though we didn't. You know, I can't believe I'm touching <laughs> the Leggy. It's it's a, it's a mighty it's a mighty honor and it's a big responsibility. Yeah. Well, so once again, I'm not I'm not worthy of touching it anymore. Thank you all so much for joining us. On behalf of Mad Roland Dolls, thank you. I am Rich Mahogany, and I'm Assassinate. Thank you for watching Mad Roland Dolls Roller Derby. Welcome everybody here. We have just witnessed the exciting conclusion of the Mad Roland Dolls Season 14 Championships with the Bad Squad with the come from behind victory to take home Leggy, the leg of champions for a three-peat. Three so I am here with Crocodopolis and Tornado Alley, Sharknado Alley, I apologize, is your Bad Squad. They bad. What an incredible game. You guys were, there was a lot of back and forth in the first half. And then going into that second half, you were trailing for a while there. But then in the last quarter, you brought it back and won. What an intense last jam. I got to ask, what did you guys, like, I have a lot of questions about what you've done and talked about over the season. But what did you guys talk about in the locker room to kind of rally and come back together to bring this game back? So I think that we are uh, well known as a second half team. So if we can keep it close in the first half, uh, we have a lot of confidence in our ability. Uh, and it was just really reflecting on saying, what is working? What do we need to tighten up the inside line? Oh, who knows that's a thing? It's always a thing. Um, and like just relying on each other and taking this calm intensity and this focused intensity into the second half and just doing the strategy that we've been practicing all season. So. And it, and it worked out great. You know, we came back out the second half. We kept the score really tight, and then we started to inch back slowly and slowly. Mm -hmm. That built our confidence, and it really showed at the end of the game. Most definitely. It was amazing to watch it just snowball. All of a sudden, it seemed like just one jam. Just all of a sudden, it's like, okay, it's Bad Squad's game now. Yeah. And, and it was, again, that, that last jam, so intense. But so so you've we've talked a few times over this season, and you've talked a bit about the strategy, this new strategy that you guys went into this season trying out. I understand if you want to continue to kind of play it close to the vest, but can you tell me more about what you've been, how you've been approaching the season? It's nothing new, in all honesty. Um, if anyone watches VRDL, uh, they are the reigning WFTDA champions. Uh, they have really revolutionized a lot of things, uh, and they really went back to something called playing zone defense or zone playing, and that not just looking at the track as a lateral thing, but also forwards to backwards, and really also coming back to our skills and going back to being playing 2-2, two -two. that a lot of times within roller derby, we get into this, we are going to just lock together into walls, and that's great until you don't have four or three, even three people. Yeah. And it was something that we definitely knew was going to put us at a disadvantage early in the season, but we knew that once we got to the end of the season, we would have stronger blockers, stronger jammers, and that it would pay off. And it, and it really showed. There were several jams where we started with two, three people in the box, and we had one person trying to hold that jammer, and we held them just long enough 
to get that advantage, and it and it, it was awesome. Yeah. A huge shout out to our coaching staff too for yeah. keeping us focused and yeah. keeping us uh, intensely just really in the game. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, clearly it's paid off. That much. Is the am I, am I correct? Is this the first three peat in MRD history, or am I just making up stats? It might be. The Resdals are the only ones I think that might be a three peat, but I'm not sure if they did three. I think that they were going to do three. You would we would have to check with Mouse on that. We'll see. All right. Well, we we won't. We like it's a yeah. Check it out. It's stats are awesome. If you're a stats nerd. One at three in a row though. Well, a huge congratulations and. I just like I'm so happy for y'all, and I gotta say like so that will just about do it for our time here. I want to thank all of you for joining us, for following us through this amazing season. Want to remind you, the Madison Roller Derby is not over yet. We are hosting our tournament, Utter Chaos, in May, less than a month away, May 18th through the 20th. You can get your tickets online at MadisonRollerDerby.org. Checking out a lot of these skaters skating with the Dairyland Dolls A and B team, Team Unicorn. Got. Hey. All kinds of great roller derby action happening. So, so yeah, thank you all for supporting Madison Roller Derby. And thanks to both of you for being your awesome, awesome selves. See you later. All right, so on behalf of Mad Rolling Dolls, I'm Rich Mahogany. Thank you all very much.